Well good afternoon folks and welcome to another review video. Today we're in Serbia and we're going to look at an airport that's actually, it's a paper airport, it's been out for a while um, but it doesn't seem to have received a, a lot of attention. But since this is um, a debut scenery by Orbix developer Rasha Tukakov, who uh, I believe is pretty closely associated with this area, um, we're going to take a close look at it. It's his first um, scenery developed for Orbix and um, to be honest it looks pretty impressive and um, there are a couple of airlines, Air Serbia, Wizz Air, Ryanair and so on that operate in and out of this airport on a regular basis. So this is NIS, L-N-I-I-S, Konstantin the Great Airport in Serbia, Lima Yankee, November, India and it's been created by Orbix developer Rasha Tukakov. The download is just under 205 megs and it installs at just under 494 megs. Prices, it's 14 euros and 22 cents, which equates to 15 dollars and 72 cents US, or 11 pounds 97 pence UK. Now you will need to add VAT and tax to those prices dependent again on your country of purchase. Currently it's available only from Orbix, um, and uh, essentially you just need the um, Orbix software to download and install it. But it's a beautiful day here just after midday in Serbia and uh, we're going to have a close look at this airport because he's done quite a lot to it and the surrounding area including the military area on the left there you can see. Um, this airport does have two runways. The uh, second runway is a grass strip that's actually not really modelled in the scenery. Um, in fact there's um. Uh, a windsock that's right in front of the approach to it and you can see a couple of lines here that indicate roughly where this runway would be and it's a grass runway where well, you've got the main runway asphalt runway here runway 29 but we'll talk about that in a minute so as ever we'll start with some history and there's a fair bit to this this airport's been through quite a bit Nice, N-I-I-S, Constantine the Great Airport, located two and a half miles or four kilometers northwest of downtown Nice in the suburbs of Modzisiewic and Popovic. It's the second largest and second busiest airport in Serbia after Belgrade Nikola Tesla Airport. The first airfield serving the city of Nice was established in 1910 near the village of Danje Mondrovo. In the 1930s, the then national airline company Aeroput used the airport for civilian flights. In 1935, Aeroput included a stopover in Nice during its back then domestic route linking Belgrade and Skopje. A portion of the airport is still used by the Serbian Air Force, as you can see down there to the right. In 1952, at the site of today's airport, the first concrete runway measuring 4,921 feet or 1,500 meters was built and used initially for military flights. But in order to keep pace with the development of military as well as civilian aircraft, in 1972 the length of the runway was extended to 2200 metres, or 7,218 feet, to accommodate larger commercial aircraft. By the 1980s, local authorities began to recognise the needs of people living in Nice, as well as the southern and eastern Serbia, and then took into account the economic development of the city. So in 1986, a decision was made to establish Airport Nice, as it was then called. The terminal building and other ancillary support facilities were built and opened in 1986. This project also included the asphalt runway and built-in system of lights that provided visual descent guidance during runway approaches at night. The development of air traffic at Nice was not initiated just by JAT, Yugoslav Airlines, but also by civilian Slovenian company Inex Adria, or now known as Adria Airways, although both airlines were at that time just domestic carriers. The breakup of Yugoslavia at the beginning of the 1990s resulted in a decrease in travelling to the Adriatic Sea, Ljubljana and Zagreb, once among the busiest routes from Nice. This was followed by the United Nations sanctions, which imposed on Serbia and Montenegro, which included a ban on international air travel. In these circumstances, the volume of traffic reached its lowest point with only one route um, to Tivat Airport being opened and only during the summer period. 
In 1998, the traffic volume increased owing to the heavy air traffic from Pristina International Airport, which was out of use because of numerous foggy days. Nice Airport was, however, heavily damaged during the 1999 NATO bombing of Yugoslavia. The airport reopened in 2003 with financial assistance from the governments of Norway. Damage sustained during the bombing was repaired, including the building of a new control tower and the renovation of the terminal building. Traffic expansion continued from 2015 when Wizz Air and Ryanair began operating services out of the airport to Baal, Malmo and Berlin. The following year, flights to Dortmund, Eindhoven, Memmingham and also to Wies, Bergamo and Bratislava were also announced. In 2018, the Serbian government awarded a 25-year concession to the French airport operator Vinci Airports to operate both Nice and Belgrade airports along with two others. As of 2019, three airlines operate out of Nice airport including the local airline Air Serbia. 2020, the airport handled over 154,000 passengers and over 1,000 aircraft movements. And as you said, on the south side of the airport you have the military apron which you can see in the distance there which is solely for military use and is owned and managed by the military. So we drop the light down so we can have a look at the runways. As mentioned, Nice Airport does actually operate two runways, although one of them is grass. We're looking down the throat of runway 29, or 29 left as it's officially shown on the charts. This runway is 8,202 feet long, or 2,500 meters, and is made from asphalt. Features high intensity airfield lighting system and precision approach path indicators. It's also equipped with a standard ILS system as well as RNP and VOR approach options. Now as you can see here in the scenery, the um, equipment, the approach lighting is actually not high intensity airfield lighting, it's the ASLEF version 2 with sequent flashing lights. It has the pappies but again only one to one side of the runway uh, and that's correct as per the charts. You've also got the displaced threshold there and you've got the end identifier green lights here too. There's also center line and edge lighting so that's pretty good. Okay, we're now looking down the throat of runway 11 right, which also has a displaced threshold, or runway 11, but it's actually right because officially on the charts there are supposedly two runways here. As you can see, it does have the high intensity approach lighting system, but it's the short version. It's not complete here. You've also got runway end identifier lighting, edge lights, and again the pappies on the left side of the runway as per the charts. So the runway is essentially half right, but not complete. But as I've said, um, the additional runway, which is known as 29 right or 11 left, is just 5,577 feet or 1,700 meters long and is, as, is a gra grass runway with no published instrument approach options and, as it would appear, no lighting at all. So essentially you can't land there during the darkness hours. So the developer, Rasha Tukakov, has also worked on the city, apart from adding um, military Russian-style aircraft, which you'll see on the airport as we look at it later on. Um, he's also developed the city and some of the landmarks, and we'll have a look at that briefly after we've looked at the airport. So let's bring the daylight back up, let's get down to the airport itself, onto the ramp, and have a look and see what's been modelled. OK, start with a quick tour across the ramp. Here you can see my aircraft parked. The Wizz Air there in the distance is actually um, um, a static model, but it looks quite good. And as you can see, the ramp looks perfectly acceptable, just as you'd expect it to see. There's an Aleutian a Russian jet, which also is a model, static model. And the buildings look quite nice as well. Everything looks really crisp and the clutter on the apron is perfectly as it should be. As you can see to the left, the grass runway actually isn't modelled, although you could potentially land there. One of the things I, was dis well, things I discovered when I started looking here is this little weather station. 
inside there you've got rain gauges um, and all sorts of bits and pieces that are synonymous with a small weather station which is quite unusual to see this at an airport so we track back across the ramp buildings look really nice and I can confirm there are no um, there's no internal development in any of the buildings there you've got the fire station, there's partial development inside there obviously because it's where the fire trucks go and there's the airport name and the baggage location area and airport name in English nicely modelled here, very very nice so let's come round to land side Um, these buses and bits and pieces here are unique to Serbia. They're the sort of ones that you would see here. Vehicle models are nice and there you've got some signage on the left. Very nicely done, crisp and clear. Nice addition to see the seats and the um, cigarette thing there. Just next to the seating. Now looking at the front of the building and you've also got some baggage trolleys modelled there quite nicely. And there you can see some examples of some of the buses. Here's an airport bus um, in the right colours. And you've got a coach there out in the car park. And again, the addition of these little plants on things here just really enhance it. Um, good crisp signage on the road. Very nice indeed. So we continue our tour here, just going past the land side part of um, the cargo base. There are the trucks. Really nice. Excellent models flatbed trucks there too and there you've got the control tower again I can report no internal development but it's all nicely modelled looks great from the outside nice view of the control tower there with the vehicle here you can see the fence line to the right and there's lots of weathering on that building which looks good and there your myriad of trucks waiting to either drop off or pick up cargo So heading out landside from the airport here, go through the um, along the road here. Again, as you can see, more development on the buildings here. Johnson Electrics. And the airport entrance sign is also looks very nice. So there's an overhead shot there. And we're showing you an overview of the civilian side of the airport there. With the airport ramp here, access to the runway. And here are your cargo trucks, there's a control tower, more car parking, a road that goes through here. Um, lots of attention, nice attention to detail. It's quite simplified, but it does look good because the texturing is good and the modelling is good. Um, although this, isn't, this doesn't look to be hugely a major airport, I think it's very quaint. It's in a nice area. Interesting approaches here because you've got high ground and mountains around. But the modelling is wonderful. And just coming away from the airport slightly here you can see there's been lots of work done off the airport to make this area look something like it really should be. Here you've got um, um, fuel trucks and um, other buildings all faithfully recreated here. No internal development into any of them but this really does look good. Just looks very nice. So a little pan across back to the airport here as you can see some lovely buildings uh, lots for you to discover here i'm not going to look at all of it because there's so much the left for you to discover and have a look at but as i lift up there you can see lots of work and buildings that have been worked on the train system here the rail yards going up in towards the city it's really very nice Okay, so let's lower the light down now down to um, dusk and see what it see what the lighting looks like. Okay, just before 7 p.m. local time, and there you can see the light is beginning to come on on the ramp area. And looking out to the little area um, to the northwest of the uh, th runway threshold there, and you can see lights all over the place. 
There's the military apron, which we'll look at a bit closer in a moment. And there's a nice view looking towards the city. We've got the river going through here. There's the rail yards. And you can see the lights are beginning to come on all over the place. Very, very pleasant. So just a close look at the ramp to begin with. Again, here you've got a very decent, powerful light source. And it's lighting up the right area. And again, even though the buildings have no internal development, you can see they've been um, created such that it gives the illusion of things going on inside them. Very nice indeed. Just the right amount of light on the ramp, as you can see with the sun going down, you can still see around on the ramp quite nicely. A close look at one of the buildings there, as you can see light coming from inside, so that gives you the illusion of things going on. Waste bin here, one or two animated people around, quite very, very, very quite nice. And the stair models are really good, and as you can see, it's got headlights as well. So we just track along towards the fire station here. Again, nice models, a little bit of internal lighting going on here. Not much inside there, but the models are excellent. Beautifully um, modelled, some of them lit. The lighting here is good. It looks pretty bright up there, but it's actually lighting up the area correctly. And nice to see that static aircraft model lit up as well. And a little look from land side. There you can see the lights, and the uh, lighting generally is of a good order. And looking across the car park, all very, very nice. Some nice touches here as well. Here you've got little seats, you've also got waste bins. Some nice attention to detail here. So again, passing over that little cargo area. Some of these trucks are lit, not, a hot, not all of them. Um, again, a couple of Sobo globes sitting around, but they do the right thing and actually produce a bit of light. Little or no light in that car park there. And just a little bit of light land side here, that building on the right, but the Johnson Electric building doesn't appear to have any lighting at all, except that one street light over there. But just to look back to the terminal and the airport lands from land side, looks quite pleasant. OK, quick look over the military apron here, here you can see some Russian military, made, uh, military type aircraft. Not an awful lot going on, but again the buildings are quite pleasant, nicely done, and they've got lighting. Again, no internal development here, although the detail on the buildings is pretty excellent. Right down to air conditioning units sitting on the outside, and drop lighting, which looks good too. Let's just pan across and have a look at some of these vehicles as we go to the other side. Here you've got those jets. Nice to see some um, people there with uniforms on. And more models, some nice vehicles and buildings, and here you've got the helicopters. And again, military personnel standing nearby. Very pleasant. That all looks quite good. And a couple more helicopters out there. Um, unfortunately, no lighting on them. Okay, the whole thing looks pretty nice there at dusk. So let's go to night time and have a look. So here we are in the dead of the night. It's sort of just before 9 p.m. local time. And you can see the lighting, as with many sceneries, has come up significantly on the ramp area of the airport there. We've also got blue airfield edge lights denoting the taxiways. And the runway is quite nicely lit, although the centre line isn't, doesn't seem to be visible. Um, again, you'll be able to see this with your nose gear lights. And there's a really nice view looking towards the city and the river. So just a general shot there looking at the airside ramp and parking area to see what's lit. So the lighting has come up a bit, but not by much. Half of the ramp is nicely lit and the other half is pretty dark. But thankfully you've got these airfield edge lights to show you the boundary of the ramp, which is good. Nice to see that um, the two models have got some lighting as well. 
and generally the lighting all over here is pretty acceptable. Let's have a look at the one area we haven't looked at at the moment that's on the airport and that's this area in the far distance here. Right, so this area here is actually listed as the area of air traffic control responsibility. So it would appear that there's something supposedly here in the real world. I can't really find any pictures of it though. But it's lit, so clearly recognised as something um, by a Sobos photogrammetry. I don't know, we'll see. But um, nothing much to, to, to see here apart from the lighting. But it is mentioned on the chart. So there's a nice high level shot showing the airport. We've got the, the civilian area on the left side and the military area on the right. The runway is defined and here's a look, a beautiful look at the city and the highway going up past the city as well. So let's go back to daytime and have a quick cruise across some of the bits and pieces that have been done outside the airport. Not going to go mad because I don't want this to be a long review. There's plenty for here, for here for you to discover. Um, the author's done a really nice job, but I just want to take a quick look and see what we can see. Oh, as you see, we've been over this area and here you can see the roads and the highways along with the cars going along looks very very good very very nice buildings look fantastic gonna slow this down a bit now as we come towards the river and here you can see just the way it's all been laid out is very very pleasant It's typical of what you would find in this part of Serbia. There's the football stadium. Um, lovely to see the cars going along as well. So heading back towards the airport here, look, you can see some marvellous little structures that have been created. Some buses, there's a bus station down there. And here's the railway sidings that you can see to the right. Very, very nicely done. Some lovely buildings. It's all been very pleasantly recreated here. And that motorway looks just absolutely real. So very nice, here we go back towards the airport and here's this, um, I don't know, it looked like sort of oil trucks or tankers or something. But the whole area has been done very, very nicely. Um, going to do a flight in or out of here, have to, it's um, very pleasant to see what's going on here. And as you can see it fits in beautifully with the terrain, very nicely modelled. Yes, beautifully done. Okay, so just going to wrap this review up very quickly. I um, hope you've enjoyed it. This is Constantine the Great um, International Airport, one of two or three airports, in, was a number of airports actually in Serbia. It's the second busiest and um, Wizz Air and Ryanair operate in and out of here quite nicely. Um, this is a debut scenery by an Orbix developer where he's done the airport quite pleasantly and paid huge attention to the city and the surrounding area. It, it's beautiful. Do I like it? Yeah, of course I do. It's wonderful. It's a, it's a lovely piece of work um, and it's pretty good price as well. The price is um, just, just over £12. I think it was £12 or £13 UK when you add the tax and um, it's just really lovely and there's so much left to discover I'm going to have to get the helicopter out and go flying over the city and see what it's like. But first of all, is to do a flight in here, so maybe do a Wizz Air flight. Don't do, don't do Ryanair. Don't like Ryanair at all. But we'll do a Wizz Air or maybe an Air Serbia flight. But the scenery is nicely done, beautifully modelled, 
Okay, no interior developments and once again um, the grass runway which is there in real life has not been modelled but that's not a problem. Um, what you need as a pilot to fly in and out of here is here, there in abundance and it's got a nice little atmosphere about it. There's just something about it that's really nice. Um, and again, one disclaimer, I did buy this. So I wasn't given this to review for free. I bought and bought it and paid for it. And I'm very pleased with the purchase. So, this is Konstantin the Great International Airport, or Nice Airport, in Serbia. Developed from, uh, available from Orbix and developed by a new developer called Rasha Tukakov. Downloads at 205 meg and it stalls at 494 meg. And um, very, very nice indeed. So thank you for joining me for this review. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's not been too long. But I uh, just thought I'd give you an introduction to a little, a nice little airport that um, has kind of gone unnoticed, I think, by the general YouTube fraternity and the flights and community. I haven't really seen an awful lot of flights going in and out of here. So I thought I'd review it. So thanks for joining me. This is Lee, your virtual airline pilot, winding up another review and saying thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video. Have a great weekend. See you next time. Bye-bye.